Hey everybody, my name is Steve Disher and I'm with ISP Supplies in College Station, Texas. And today we're going to be looking at the AirLink program, which is uh, given to you free of charge by Ubiquity. And this program will allow us to map out points on a map and determine the amount of bandwidth we can get between those two points for a wireless link. In addition, the tool has been recently upgraded, and in this version 2.0, it can also do coverage maps for us, or heat maps, to show us the amount of bandwidth that we can deliver to a certain geographical area in a point-to-multipoint -point scenario, as well as areas that we can serve and areas that we will not be able to serve. So this is a really handy tool, recently upgraded, greatly improved, and so let's go ahead and jump right into the tool now. So if you want to start the tool, it's airlink, A-I-R-L-I-N-K, dot U-B-N-T dot com. And you're going to hit enter and it's going to load the airlink tool into your browser. Now as far as browsers are concerned, I definitely recommend using Chrome with the airlink tool. You're going to get much better results with Chrome. A lot of problems with other web browsers. Now uh, just kind of looking at the display here and the different settings that we can set, in the upper left hand corner we can select if we're going to do a point to point link or if we want to do a point to multi point link and so we'll just start with the point to point also we have the ability to zoom in on the screen to select different layers such as uh, looking at the terrain or a satellite view and that type of thing which each have their different uses also the ability then to uh, simulate a link once we got everything mapped out uh, also, we have the ability to save our simulations to our Ubiquity account, and if you haven't created a free account at Ubiquity yet, you can do that simply by going to account.ubnt.com, and so we're going to go ahead and log into our Ubiquity account, and this will allow us to be able to save these plots that we're going to create here. Once you've uh, created the simulation that you're looking for, you can save that by clicking the Save Simulation, and you can also open other simulations that you've created. Over here on the right-hand side of the screen, this is where you're going to see things like the visual representation of the Fresnel Zone, showing you whether or not you're going to have line of sight for your link. Other things are shown here, including the uh, estimated minimum received signal strength, uh, as well as the capacity of the link that we're planning out here. So this tool will work for almost all of the Ubiquity devices they currently have in production, uh, and they're constantly being added as additional devices are created. So let's jump right into the tool now. The first step is going to be to determine where we're going to put our points on the map for the two ends of our point-to-point -point link. Now there's a number of ways to do this. One way is to simply type in uh, an address and then we can find that point on the map. Or we can also take and we can drag our endpoints to find where the two points of our link are going to be. So that's what I'm going to do now. I'm going to use the, the map here to find my office, which is uh, here on Highway 30 in College Station, Texas. So we'll uh, just place that right about there, which is our office location. The second thing we're going to do is to pick up the point of a potential tower site. And so there it is there. So simply all I've done is drag the AP or the access point end where I want it to be. And then the purple point is the station. The next step is to come over here to the right hand side and pick the product that we want to use for this particular link. And so we start with the technology, in this case uh, either Air Fiber, Air Fiber X, Air Fiber FX, Air Max, or Air Max AC. So in this case I'm going to go with a simple Air Max AC link, and now you see we have two choices, 2.4 or 5 gigahertz, so we'll select that. And now it's going to show us the various antenna gains that Ubiquity has as far as antennas are concerned for our particular product in our link. So in this case we selected a 31 dBi antenna for our access point end, and we're going to select the same antenna for our station end. Uh, you can see the product that uh, falls within this particular specification is going to be the Rocket 5AC Prism Gen 2 and we have the same radio on the opposite end. If we wanted to change that device we can do that as well. Simply hover over the little uh, blue circle, 
pick a different product, whatever you want to pick, and then the simulation will be planned with that particular product. It's also going to show you some things like the decimal coordinates for each end of the link, and then give you the ability to put in the height for each end of this particular link. Now, at our office, we only have a 75 foot tower. So I need to be able to convert 75 feet to meters in order to be able to use a tool. So I'll just take 75 divided by 3.28, and that gives me about 22 meters height for the AP end of the link. At the other end, we have a 210 foot tower. So I'll repeat that same procedure, 210 divided by 3.28, and that gives us a 64 foot, uh, rather, uh, yeah, a 64 meter tower at the other end of the link. So with my two endpoints in place, my height, my antenna gain, I've picked the technology I'm using here, in this case, the Rocket 5 AC Prism Gen 2, and I've done that for both ends of my link. And now in the upper right hand corner, I'm going to see my link modeled out showing me that I have clear Fresnel zones. So I obviously have line of sight as well as first Fresnel zone and 60% clearance zone. So this particular link I should be able to receive 64 decibels of power on both ends which should give me somewhere in the 6x modulation. Uh, now you notice our link capacity only about 45 megs that doesn't seem like much but if we look down here we'll see the reason is that our channel width was set to only 10 megs. So with this particular product, we could go all the way up to 80 megahertz of channel. And now our throughput has jumped way up to 327 megabits per second. So this is a really handy tool for you and gives you the ability to do things like change uh, heights on the tower. So let's say that uh, we wanted to go lower on the tower and possibly use a larger dish and reduce our wind load uh, at a, or at least move our wind load to a lower place on the tower. We can do that by simply adjusting the height on both ends of our link. Now, when you're looking at this profile view, it looks as if we've got clear Fresnel zones, but what you have to remember is that there is no uh, accounting here for ground clutter. So I'll show you a little bit of a trick that I use in order to make sure that we really have a clear Fresnel zone. So we've uh, adjusted our tower height a little bit uh, on one end, so we're about at the lowest possible position that we could be on the tower at 35 meters. Uh, we're still looking at our link and we're not real comfortable with the amount of received signal because we're not modulating at the highest modulation rates. So one of the things that we could possibly do is use a higher gain antenna on one end or both ends. So once we set our antenna, the link gets remodeled and there's not a significant improvement still in that particular link uh, as far as received signal. So there's really not much else we can do with that particular link in order to improve the signal strength. So we could either make the link shorter or possibly try a different product. So as you can see, it's very simple to simply move uh, endpoints around, uh, remap our links, and determine whether or not we have clear line of sight. Something else that you're going to uh, have to take into account is ground clutter. So there may be objects uh, above ground, man-made objects, trees, that type of thing that are actually obstructing our Fresnel zone, even though it looks like we have a very clear Fresnel zone here. So one uh, tool I use to make sure that the Fresnel zone is clear is to simply switch over to a satellite view. Once you're in the satellite view, you can zoom in a bit and I like to think about this as kind of flying down the length of my link. And what I'm looking for is obstructions that might cause issues with this link. Now, as you can see, we're in a rural area, so there aren't a lot of tall buildings and that type of thing. In fact, there really aren't any. So pretty much our only obstruction that this link is going to see might possibly be uh, some trees that lie along the way. So uh, in that particular scenario, I pretty much just need to know what the average height of trees is in my particular area. And I can tell you that almost all the trees in this area are post oak trees, and they typically run around uh, 50 to 55 feet in height. 
Now, as we stated before, this profile view is only going to show me the ground clutter based upon uh, the terrain data that we have for this particular link. And so one little trick that I normally play is uh, on my Mac, I can zoom in on a certain part of the screen. I can get a little better idea. I'm not sure how well it shows up in the video, but what I see is that the point where the Fresnel zone is closest to the ground, uh, the ground is around 100 meters in elevation, and my 60% clearance zone is somewhere around 108. So uh, the difference between those is about 8 meters or uh, almost 30 feet, which would not be quite enough to clear a 55-foot tree. And so what I would likely do is just add a little bit of height to one or both of the ends of the link, and the hope there would be to get me above the tree line. So I've done that now. Now uh, the base of our 60% Fresnel zone is somewhere around 110 meters and our ground is still around 100. Uh, so that gets us a, a lot closer and again we can just continue to adjust that until we're sure that we have sufficient clearance between our Fresnel zone and our ground clutter. So that's how you do a point-to-point -point link. And again, these are really easy to do, very fast, and they give you a very accurate simulation of what your point-to-point -point link is going to look like from an RF perspective. Now, the other function that we have built into this tool is the ability to do a point-to-multipoint link. And so the setup is very similar, but instead of using PTP, I'm going to click the second option here for PTMP. And we'll wait a moment for the AirLink tool to load up the PTMP version. And what you're going to see is that it will begin with a very similar link location as we had for the point to point. But now we have the ability to add additional CPE devices. And so if we click on AP, we'll uh, just determine which AP we want to use. In this case, we'll go with the Rocket 5 AC Prism Gen 2 again. And uh, we're going to use a sector antenna and it doesn't really matter what the sector pattern is, what's important is the dB of this particular antenna. So we'll go with a 20 dBi antenna. For our tower location, we're going to move our tower out to a location that uh, where we actually have a tower pretty close to here. And what we're going to see, once again, is a point-to-point -point view from the tower to our customer or CPE location. We can do the same things that we did before. We can set our channel width. In this case, we'll run a 20 megahertz channel. Uh, we can also go to our CPE and change the CPE and put in different devices here, like the Lightbeam 5 AC Gen 2 in this case. Or if we need a, a higher gain device, we can change that and go with even a rocket and a dish antenna or just whatever combination we want to choose. And we have a lot of options here. In this case, we'll go with the Nanobeam 5AC Gen 2. So now on this particular link, we see we have the ability to get up to a 6X modulation with a minus 62 received signal. Uh, not too bad for that particular link. We also have the ability to add additional CPE devices. So by adding additional CPEs, we can uh, plan out multiple customers and determine what their link profiles are going to look like. Now, you're probably not going to do that for every customer or every location that you're going to add on your map. So a quick way of determining what our coverage is going to look like is to click this button here that says Generate Terrain Coverage. So when I click Generate Terrain Coverage, it's going to build a heat map and that heat map is going to show me the optimal areas that I can serve from this particular location. Now you notice where this tower is, we have a, a decent service area that exists around the tower. Uh, most of it is within 3.9 kilometers. There are some low spots in here where there is no coverage. Uh, the orange, the red, and the black, those are the dead areas that we can't serve but we can also get uh, past those areas and continue to serve clients. So this heat map is a very quick way for us to be able to determine what our coverage area is. So when a customer calls in, we can log into our Ubiquity account, load this particular coverage map that we've created, find the customer's address or even search for it based upon the address bar here at the top, 
and quickly plot out where they're located and determine whether or not they're within the service area of this particular tower. So uh, that's the tool in a nutshell. The easiest way to learn to use this tool is to simply load it up and start simulating some links. Once you've created a few links, you can save those links. I'll just call this one test. And then later on, I can pull that link up and load it from my particular Ubiquity account. Uh, another way you can use this coverage map is to start with the coverage map, wait until a customer calls in, type in their address, plot their link. Or you can simply grab one of these existing customer locations and drag it around to where that customer is located. Just like in the point-to-point -point link, we have to make sure that the customer is going to be able to see the tower. Just because we're serving an area, that doesn't guarantee that we're going to be able to get over obstructions like trees and that type of thing. So again, a quick way to do that is to simply make sure that you are in the satellite view. You're going to find that customer location and zoom in and see what possible obstructions might exist around that customer location. Most likely, it's going to be trees, other homes, and that type of thing. This does look like uh, a real residential area here. And so the challenge would once again to be getting above those 50 foot trees and high uh, homes that exist around this location. So that's the AirLink tool. I hope you'll spend some time using it. It will save you a lot of time and allow you to create more reliable links and to understand what kind of links that you're creating and what kind of capacities uh, you can expect to get on those particular links. So once again, my name's Steve Disher. I'm with ISP Supplies. I'm glad you joined us today, and I hope you'll enjoy using the AirLink tool.